We must start with the $774 million hit in the prime brokerage business. I'm assuming that's Archegos. Are all these positions closed? Are all the losses accounted for? Clearly, you know, we're very disappointed at this situation. Uh, we, um, we're taking it very seriously. Uh, we're reviewing the different prime brokers relationships as well as the GFO, the family office relationships, reviewing the risk management processes as well in order to get the lessons learned out and make sure that it doesn't happen again. Will you reduce leverage and reassess how you lend to the prime brokerage or to the family offices? Well, I think if you take the lessons learned up to now, there is like certainly two elements that we are picking up. So the first one is the, uh, the level of transparency in some of this business, uh, as well as the, the, the concentrated positions that were built up vis-a-vis -vis the leverage, I guess. So it's a combination of those uh, that we have to take into account going forward. Will you demand greater transparency from those family offices going forward? Absolutely, absolutely. That's the, lesson, that's the big lesson learned here. Uh, it's not only that we should demand it and, and, and all banks should demand that, it's also that we should look at regulations to come in here in order to uh, ensure that a, uh, an idiosyncratic event like this doesn't happen again. Will you cut leverage to the hedge fund business in the investment bank? Uh, not necessarily. I do think you have to be very selective and very prudent ar around that. Uh, uh, in the, we have strong client relationships. We have a client, a strong business here. Uh, the prime brokerage business itself is strategic to us. Uh, the capabilities. You're still fully committed to PB. Absolutely. Uh, the capabilities on the line prime brokerage business are, are important to build up uh, your wealth business going mm -hmm. forward, and therefore we're committed to it strategically. Uh, but again, you know, we have to take the lessons learned and make sure that we do it uh, good for going forward. Ralph, well, seven hundred seventy-four million dollars is three quarters of a billion dollars. You're going to do a conference call. Why did you not disclose this number sooner? Well, you're referring to a gross number. Uh, the net number is 434. Um, uh, in view of the very strong first quarter results, uh, we felt it was not required at the time. You're also mentioning the buyback. When can we expect buybacks to restart? Well, we announced the sheer buyback as a program until the end of uh, 24, uh, in, in the size of 4 billion Swiss francs. We have performed on that in the first quarter, and we will continue uh, going forward, and we will be in the market this week. OK, back to buybacks this week? Yep. The growth, let's, let's talk about the numbers, because you've got a new metric, $36 billion net new fees of generating assets. This looks like a colossal number. What is it? And, and translate that into business for me from the clients. Well, um, what we're currently looking at here is for the wealth management business, we are moving away from net new money to net new fee generating assets. Uh, what it does it, it is truly telling you which are the real valuable assets going forward and with that uh, under management and the real growth under, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, as well. And what's important there is that the net new fee generating assets as a number is much more a leading indicator as to the success of our wealth management franchise. And as you said, it's 36 billion in the first quarter, which really uh, shows how strong the franchise has performed. Which geography took the most risk? Uh, it's not about taking risk. Uh, this is, uh, if you look at the, at the risk levels, uh, uh, even after the loss that we had to absorb, we had a very strong CT1 core tier 1 mm -hmm. ratio of 14%, which basically means, man, is that, you know, um, you know however disappointed we are uh, with the loss, um, we have been able to absorb it. Even the investment bank has been able to absorb it. Let's just circle back to the business. Inflows in every part of the world. Where were the strongest inflows? The strongest inflows are where the wealth is growing the fastest, which is still in the US, which is the largest wealth pool. And in Asia, that's where the strongest influence are. So a new CEO, you, a new chairman across the road at Credit Suisse, it's an obvious question. Is this the moment where the regulators will seriously look at some kind of combination between CS and UBS at some level? I don't know what the re regulators are doing. Uh, I, uh, uh, we are coming out with a, uh, with a refresh of our strategy. It is very clear that we have strong momentum. Uh, that we are focusing on organic growth, and to the extent there is uh, some opportunities uh, in, in, in specific capabilities for us to consider to buy. We if there were assets that. on the block from Credit Suisse, for example, in asset management, 
Well, everything that brings out uh, either an additional capability or can uh, help the scale in some of the capabilities that we think are strategic, we will certainly look at it uh, from many players in the world.